Hey, this is Otzard. We are in the Tier 5 Premium U.S. Battleship, Texas. She has 10 356mm guns, 6 secondary guns, 82 AA guns, a surface detect of 13.4 kilometers, top speed 20.5 knots, total health 49,100. For my modules, reduce crit chance on main battery, increase main battery range, reduce the chance of flood and fire. For my commander, Situation Awareness, Basic Survivability, Basic Firing Training, Faster Turret Traverse, Fire Alert, Superintendent, Advanced Firing Training, and Concealment. We are on the map, Fault Line, and yes, this is the Texas. The Texas is a New York class battleship. The strengths over the New York, AA is better. The firing arc is more usable. Specifically, the number three gun on the New York basically requires a perfect broadside in order to bring it to bear. Whereas with this one, you can have a little bit more angle and potentially protect yourself from more devastating damage. However, the rudder is slower. The speed of the ship is slower. And those are two really important things. At a point, you just cannot get across the map fast enough to carry the game. You are much more reliant on others to capture and control you primarily provide fire support for the enemy. Now we're reloading, of course, against the enemy Phoenix who is attempting to capture B. He's completely out in the open. The gun is depressed and we lead the target slightly. We're gonna follow it in and see how successful we do. Oh, that's pretty successful. Devastating strike. And that Phoenix is no more and nobody's capturing B. Maybe we can have a follow-up to attempt to capture. The friendlies have captured A. I choose to go to C, I feel like my teammates needed me. We lost a destroyer. We're probably going to lose the St. Louis. If I can help take out the cruiser and the destroyer there, if we're able to somehow protect the St. Louis, we could capture C, maybe move south, maybe take on the Bogue. The Bogue will be attacking this flank primarily. And the AA is great for self-defense. Keyword, self-defense. The range is really bad. It's 4.5 kilometers, give or take with advanced firing training. That's with advanced firing training. It's really bad. So unless they're attacking you, it's really hard to make use of the AA for the Texas. There's one interesting aspect of all of this though. I'm on the North American server. The Texas is a pretty famous American battleship. I expect a lot of Americans are gonna buy it just like the British buy the Warspite, just like the Germans buy the Tirpitz, and I I'm willing to bet that the European server sees more Warspite and Turpits than the average server. So buckle up. There's going to be a lot of Texas out there in the North American realm. 100%. You can't really attack it effectively with the same tier aircraft. You've got to try and have a weakened state. Remember, AA breaks pretty often when under attack and we are getting a good broadside that was that we needed that against that destroyer we don't have anyone here to scout for us we can only rely on friendly aircraft now there is an enemy cruiser he's barely alive he's gonna die he's a tier three he's no match for the power of the texas and he's firing ap for whatever reason this is a good example of the extreme firing arc that the number three gun has access to that you just don't get on the New York. The New York is frustrating, just like the Wyoming. You've sort of got the catapult launchers in the way, and of course we just obliterated him. That was super overkill. We only needed one shell, but it looked like we hit at least six, maybe eight. So the catapult launcher retrieving mechanism, it gets in the way of the number three gun on the New York. Well, on the Texas, it's 180 degrees in the other direction, so it doesn't get in the way. You can rotate the guns and have access to them more often. So your theoretical DPS output for this ship should be higher than the New York. It's got better AA, better DPS. What does it really lack? It, it lacks the speed, but we're talking half a knot, maybe a knot. It's awful either way. So this is one of those ships where I think the benefits that they gave to the Texas far outweigh any of the negative aspects. You're never really going to be in a position to take aircraft the way the New York takes it. So the rudder shift is only 
relevant for destroyers and if you keep a good distance and you call on the help of a teammate and this aircraft carrier he figured it out he scouts out the destroyer which i really needed that was very very hectic i would have had to deal with an invisible target for the rest of the match instead we get to do significant damage not enough but we're going to move the other guns and you, you just notice it already it's much easier to make use of all the guns and we take them out we're going to probably take one torpedo oh no doesn't even have range we're good we're good I would definitely argue that the Texas is just a clear superior ship to the New York and it's mostly to do with that gun and the AA protection. Everything else is really irrelevant as a battleship in my opinion. If you've got good AA, you don't need good rudder shift because rudder shift is really used to dodge and maneuver your ship against the aircraft. But if you knock them out, and we're going to see a good example right here of me attacking the enemy aircraft, then rudder shift losing one or two seconds isn't a big deal. But the guns, bringing a gun to bear that basically is out of action 80 to 90% of the time with the New York is just a huge bonus. It's a huge benefit. It really cannot be understated. So look at that. We just helped wipe out that. We're going to work on the dive bomber. I believe we had a benefit of accuracy or something protecting our ship and they missed again. We're just devastating the aircraft that are overhead. We've got the help of the friendly fighters and we're going to try and head slowly to sea. On my main account, I have plenty of speed boost flag so I can even compensate for that weakness. That's one of those issues. If you try and attack a certain aspect of a ship, well, there's a lot of slight adjustments that can be made maybe maybe the damage control is slower okay well we can load premium and we can also have the consumable flag that will assist you in fighting and if you can minimize those weaknesses and they are weaknesses glaring weaknesses the speed of the ship is an issue you can be more effective and you can be very scary at tier 5 i love the new york Part of that was I really learned how to play a battleship in the New York because I was just ineffective. I was not firing at the waterline. I was not going all in on a citadel. I was looking for consistent hull damage, which it definitely was giving, but it wasn't up to the levels of damage that I really wanted to see. And we eventually learned how to play it and I've shared it with my videos and those seem like an eternity from now. I, I, I love it. I get so many comments and I really have fallen behind. I need to catch up, but I'll get a comment on a video that's like 10 months old. Hey, why did you do this? I don't know. It's 10 months. The game is completely different. I don't know my reasoning. The best reason is in the video, I find. And I was setting up for an attack on that Bogue. Didn't have to do it. Of course, setting up an attack. We were slowly moving towards sea and his aircraft were automatically sent, and just look at how easily it is to protect itself. The AA is just great. I feel pretty confident in stating that this is the best US premium ship in the game right now. Tier for tier, the Saipan is very effective, but I think the Saipan really does require a high skill commander and a player that's comfortable playing at higher levels. The higher level aircraft move faster. They have a smaller squadron, so you have to be careful. You can't be over the target too long. You really have to commit to a clean attack and avoid the AA range. Whereas with the Texas, you pretty much apply all of your learned skills with the US battleship line, and you're going to be pretty good. You're going to probably be a little bit better. You're not going to be under the onslaught that is the aircraft as much and you'll have more use for that number three gun and that's really important now i believe the number four gun did get a slight nerf in its effective range but it's so much smaller of a nerf than the buff of having access to the number three gun in far more scenarios as far as this game is concerned i slowly captured c the team on the west completely fell to the enemy and what we're trying to do is maybe kill the Wyoming. I'm hoping that my team can kill that destroyer. And I'll try and get over to B as quickly as a turtle really can move, right? This is the turtle. It, you're really tanky. You can do 
a lot, well, I don't know how many turtles really have 10 main battery guns that can just annihilate targets, but, but you get the idea. It's very protected, and it's very slow. You just can't do anything fast at all. And we have our front guns ready, we fire on the target, we do minimal damage, he's got great angling. He's not looking at me at all though, so I'm completely fine continuing this process. I'd like to get out into the open area and bring more guns to bear. But the guns are ready to go once I'm in the open. And he decides, okay, we're going to fire HE at your ship. Thankfully, we weren't set on fire. I get to wait another cooldown before it's an issue. And for whatever reason, the Wyoming decides, just shoot at my side. Please shoot at my side. And he is slowing down slightly. We lead the target and we knock out the Wyoming. Two citadels. Not one, but two citadels. And it really feels good. It, I'm, I'm going to get the ship. I am very close to the ship. I'm also really close to the Lexington. I would love to have both of those ships recorded as content. I know not everyone can go see all these ships. Plenty of you have told me, oh, I've seen that Polish destroyer, the Boiskavica. It looks great. Well, that's probably something I'll never get to see because <laughs> Poland is really far away from me. I would love to see the Yamato model that they have set up at the, I believe it's the Japanese Naval Museum. I'm not 100%. All of those things are just fantastic. And, you know, the Texas is within reach. We can actually go see her and we could share our thoughts on her. I can also get to the Lexington. It's not too far. I'm, I live in Texas. I think, uh, I think I've said that. And it's pretty reasonable for me to drive five hours and not think about it at all everything is really far away in texas if you want to go to other cities it's not a big deal and the lexington i believe is in corpus christi i'm not 100 percent and i think what they were doing is they were restoring her to her world war ii and of course we just couldn't overcome this game we were too far down and i was too slow to get and capture points but we got four kills four citadels we absolutely wiped out a couple ships 1,287 base XP, and we, we probably did more captures than anyone on our team. We did around 57,000 points of damage, which I feel pretty good considering we only had an opportunity to engage, what, four or five ships? Not a lot of health on them. But this isn't the only game. We've got another one, Texas on Big Race. Now, both of these games, I must point out, I'm top tier. Now, I was playing against tier 6s and tier 7s. I was having success. However... I'm not getting five and six kill games because you're running into really, really, really strong ships. So keep that in mind. This sees exactly the same matchmaking as the New York. And you should expect that from pretty much every ship. I think Wargaming actually has to put in a special case scenario for a ship to not see the normal range. So just keep that in mind. It's basically a New York that's premium. And it's a better New York that's premium in most cases that matter. Now on Big Race, I'm going to follow in my friendly and that's really what you need. You need to have backup in a battleship and we, we catch sight of an Omaha. It's a tier five US cruiser and we're gonna fire at the waterline. Notice we depress the gun, significant pixels and we're gonna follow it in and oh, nice. That's what we want. That's the dream for every battleship. You just one shot. A enemy cruiser he showed too much of a side and just to touch on the depression of the gun if I see a target on the minimap I confirm it as well coming towards me even if it's ever so slightly I would like the shell to land just at the base it needs to land where the water is starting to come over the hull it basically can only hit the water for the last you know millisecond that it's traveling and if you hit it just right you will hit a part of the ship that is unarmored or low armored compared to just millimeters higher so you really need to sort of lead below the water line in a very very specific manner and if a target is moving closer or moving ahead you have to compensate and that's exactly what we tried to do as far as this enemy destroyer, I have no interest whatsoever in getting close, but if the Clemson is going to scout him out, I'm going to engage him with my gun. I don't care that I'm a battleship. You're not supposed to do that, Notzer. That's that's what you say 
when you don't want to take responsibility for winning the game, you have to contribute, whether it's big, whether it's small, to the success of your team. And if a Clemson is trying to engage an enemy destroyer in close combat, one shell can push him over. And that's exactly what I try to do. Enemy Minekaze appears to be, yeah, he sent out his torpedoes. We miss, ah. He smacks into the Clemson and he's gone. I'm not going in there. Friendly Furutaka is willing to, so if he's willing, I am able to provide fire support. We just need him scouted. Now, I thought the aircraft carrier might provide... Oh, oh, he did. He scouted him out. Okay, okay. Well, he's he's not too far away. The Furutaka is definitely committed to taking him out, so we're going to commit as well. And I just need to get a gauge on where he's going. We fire a little bit, and I think I might hit one. We hit one. Okay. 1,000 is pretty awful, but it's something, right? We fire again, and uh, oh, that's much better. A single shell gives us 2,100 points of damage, and I believe we did a lot of damage because it actually got to stick in the ship. We basically got them perpendicular to our ship, and the shell was able to travel the length of the engine, and ultimately that's what gave us the most damage. However, he's still alive. We need him dead. Now this St. Louis might. No, he's he's showing very little side. I want a side shot. Please, my enemies, please show your side. Now we're behind right now. This is this could be worse. It's not good, but it could be worse. And oh, St. Louis, keep doing it. And if I was on a team, what are you doing? Now you notice we actually gave plenty of room. Oh yes. 12,000 points of damage. We gave plenty of room between the waterline of the ship and the horizontal line that's on the binocular. And that really helps us out. If the ship is coming towards us, it allows us to hit the water. But even if he's perfectly perpendicular to our fire, it will help us hit at the waterline right where we need to go to end up with a citadel. So he's sort of moving away. We have it elevated. I'm hoping by the time he moves in, I was a, a little hesitant. I'm going into a very, very dodgy scenario. We've got not one, but two battleships and an enemy destroyer. Granted, it's a Soviet destroyer. So the only way it could harm me with the torpedoes is if it's within four kilometers. If it was a Gremyashi, well, we would have a much different scenario. In this scenario, we are much safer. I just need to not be perfectly broadside to the enemy. And it's a New York, so it's basically the exact same ship, except for those little quirks that it has to deal with. Oh, yes. A lot of damage there. Can we get more? And he's not looking at us, so we're going to angle against him. And now we have to treat the Gnevni as the primary target. He's getting within four kilometers. You know what that means. He wants to send his torpedoes. The enemy New York? does pretty good damage i'd say i don't know if this is fact it feels like the texas takes a little bit more damage but that could just be i'm getting big shots since i played the new york people are better at <laughs> people are better at uh aiming at the enemy and landing their shots we one shot that enemy destroyer and it felt so good because he was getting in position to send his torpedoes but people are just better they've improved their aim They've improved their understanding of when to fire what. It's across the board a more competitive environment than it was 10 months ago. Maybe even 5 months ago. And of course that's wonderful. As a competitive person you should really hope that your opponent is pushing you to your limits. It makes both of you better and it makes the situation more entertaining for us. I love these really tight games and we're trying to win this really tight game. This enemy New York only takes 3k. But because the firing arc is so reasonable, I can decide to engage the Wyoming. However, I felt like the enemy Mjolki is going to come around this corner and we will have, yes, we will have a perfect broadside. Now I fire at the waterline. He's basically perpendicular and we get a Citadel. Nice, 17,000 points of damage and a Confederate. The enemy aircraft carrier, however, has decided to fire on us. We have our back guns in position and we fire again, looking for another Citadel doesn't really disperse in the manner that we wanted but the AA is taking care of business it's so comforting 
to have AA that protects you from most of the aircraft attacks. We're just reloading. <laughs> the torpedo bomber tried to attack, I believe, a cruiser or a battleship in front of me. That's fine. The enemy battleship is sluggish, so I try and not lead him as much, and we get another Citadel. 13,000 puts of damage, high caliber. He's still alive, barely. Is someone going to try and take the kill? I hope not. We did a lot of damage to him. We're able to actually get credit for the kill, and that's our third kill. We've done a great job so far, but the game is still too close to call. Anything can happen. The New York can take out the friendly battleship. The aircraft carrier can sink our cruiser. We've got to do everything in our power to give our team the best chance to win. Now, this enemy New York is burning, and we're going to continue to fire on him and try and help our team. We'll see if we can get a citadel or anything, and uh, we didn't do any damage. What? He has to turn north, though, or he's going to pull a Notzer. That will help us out immensely. Now, I let him a little bit too much, but I did do 5k, and that's, that's satisfactory. He's continuing to fire on the Congo, and he is dropping pretty rapidly. Now, I was considering, should I choose to hold fire? Should I engage the target? I decide to fire, and I had a sneaking suspicion that, yes, indeed, he did have damage control. It ended up being the perfect decision to minimize the time the target was alive, and I'm happy that we took out the New York. We are now going to transition to the Wyoming, and pretty much all our guns have been in use the entire time. It's just such a huge deal to lose out on 20% of your guns with the New York in 90% of the scenarios, versus the Texas can bring them all to bear. And another low health target, our guns are reloaded, we're gonna fire on the target, the friendlies are unable to finish him off. This should kill him, and it does. We earn Kraken Unleash. And yeah, the, the Texas is pretty good. We earned Confederate Kraken Unleashed. Two devastating strikes, high caliber, five kills, six citadels, 2,135 base XP. Just obliterate everyone on XP earned. I'm really happy. We did around 122,000 points of damage in a tier 5 match in 10 minutes. Yeah, she's beautiful. And she lives up to the name. I hope you enjoyed both of these games. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you next time.